Good afternoon, and welcome to Bad Dog Comedy TV, live comedy on YouTube, and stories with B. Now please welcome your host, B. Bertrand. Hi friends. I hope you're having a nice day today. Thanks for hanging out with me again. Um, I'm so excited. I have this show, Stories with B, and this is my fourth one. Um, uh, this started at the beginning of quarantine. Um, I had, for some reason, decided to take all my children's books with me uh, everywhere for every apartment that I moved to. And I had a big collection and I just decided maybe it would be nice to start reading people a story. And it just kind of picked up. And now I have this awesome show that I'm so excited about with Bad Dog. And I really appreciate you hanging out with me. Um, this week, I have a very special friend who I'm so excited about. We've been friends for the last few years and we met through comedy and they are a comic and a writer and an actor and a singer and just the most lovely human. And every time we hang out or talk to each other, both of us make each other cry. So I decided to not do a super sucky uh, um, introduction. So everyone, please welcome my lovely, sweet, special friend this week, Brett and Lalama. Oh. <laughs> Oh, already? Stop it. I'm Stop sweating. it. I'm hey, buddy. Sweating. Hey, how's it going? Oh, my gosh. Thank you so much for doing this. Thanks for having me. I just found out about 20 minutes ago that you are in the middle of your work day, which I this is, really this is appreciate. Perfect, this is a perfect lunch break. You're Dinner doing it right, break. buddy. Thanks. You. Thanks. <laughs> Well, I want to start this off the way that I normally yeah. start it off. So I'm going to say, um, thanks everyone for hanging out. I hope that you're having a nice day. I hope you're safe and warm and cozy and you have all your special things. And I hope you have your special drink. Do you have yours, bud? Cheers. Cheers. What are you drinking? Uh, coffee. Yeah. Coffee I for the working man. <laughs> I started feeling really guilty about drinking all of my monsters and Red Bulls in front of kids. So I just put it in a clear glass. So it looks like it could be Gatorade. Oh, I thought lemonade. Lemonade. I'm going to start saying that. Get it. Um, so uh, I wanted to talk to you about stories. Maybe that you're in. Did you read stories and stuff when you were a kid? Did you have bedtime stories or? Well, yeah, I always had bedtime stories and uh, like I grew up in a farm and we didn't have any internet or television or anything like that. So what I would do for fun was read, uh, remember those like phonics books? It was like Matt sits on the cat. Hopefully that, not that, but stuff like that. <laughs> yeah. But, uh, you know, improv, <laughs> improv game, Rusty. <laughs> uh, well, yeah, we're I read. I read for fun, yeah. What kind of, those? so those are your favorite stories to kind of read? Just like sounding out phonics kind of deals? Well, that was, you know, that was like my gateway story. Um, and then I progressed to everything. I, I really liked fantasy. I uh, I was growing up at the time Harry Potter was like coming out. So that was a really big deal to me. Now it's problematic. Let's not get into that. Uh, and <laughs> and uh, I read a lot of, I read like all the classics. I really liked as a kid. I really liked stories about animals, though, or like nature. That was my favorite. Me too. Well, did yeah. you have a favorite book growing up? I my absolute favorite book. If I yeah. had to say one, uh, it would be. Uh, do you know the very hungry caterpillar? I do. I've heard of it. Have you heard of it? I've heard of it. I can't do this with you. I love you so much. I can't pretend that we didn't already talk okay. about this because I we love this book. This. <laughs> <laughs> I love that book. It was, I think that was the first interactive book that I had ever seen. And it was so fun and neat to like change the pages and have things kind of pop out at you. Yeah. I ripped off all the flaps and then colored underneath them because that's the kind of anxiety we were dealing with from a very young age. That's so interesting. The people that I've had, um, my special friends in in the past uh, few, like months, we'd all kind of brought up at some point anxiety growing up. And I found that people dealt with that in a lot of different ways and like coloring in things that makes so much sense. But my anxiety, I had to keep things like pristine, like, 
you know, I was never the type of person to like uh, draw on things. I didn't even want to write my name in it, which is not great. It would have been nice to, I guess, make them more love, but I was so preoccupied with keeping everything perfect. I think that's great though, because now at least those books still have flaps and things, whereas mine is just (laughs) a big scratched out. (laughs) It tells a, it tells a story. I'll give you that. It tells a story. I love that. I think that is very special. What kind of stories do you like now? Um, I like poetry. Um, I like reading. Uh, lately, I've been reading a lot of um, queer history because I think that's something I always told myself I couldn't do because I didn't want to be that person. Um, but I've been. And then I actually, do you know Bear Bergman? Sorry, you cut out a little bit. Do I know who? Do you, do you know writer, like the Toronto writer Bear Bergman? Yeah. So they have a really cool like publishing company that publishes um, all sorts of cool kids books. And I honestly just kind of been looking through all those different ones because they're like, it's really cool. It's like diverse, visibly diverse children's books and like parents who are gay and queer. And it's really cool. So I've just been looking through those lately. That's awesome. If for people yeah. watching, it'll be under S. Bear Bergman. Um, I'm going to check that out for sure. Um, I love yeah. them. And I've been trying to get, I ordered a whole bunch of books that, um, a different book list. Um, and the problem they have is a great one. They're really backlogged. But I made sure oh. to order some queer books and some uh, books about black families and stuff because all my books growing up, they weren't diverse. And it was a, a lot of like animal books and stuff like that, which I've been yeah. enjoying reading. But it's nice to like, there's really great books out there for kids now with all different types of families and a lot more inclusive so they can like see themselves in the books. I love it. I think it's so important. Yeah, yeah. that's great. Thank you for that uh, little plug. I want to check that oh, for yeah. sure. Check it out, everybody. Uh, I can't help but notice you have something strapped to your body. <laughs> <My musical. laughs> your My musical, musical instrument. Defenders. Yes. <laughs> Accordion. That's how I first met you. I thought you were so lovely and sweet and charming. And your first show, you had an accordion. And I was like, what is this person going to do? Well, yeah, same. I think that was my question, too. <laughs> <laughs> Are you going to uh, do a little ditty today, bud? Bless yes. you. Sorry about that. Yes. That's okay. Yeah. All, the, all the accordion got me all excited, you know? <laughs> I guess I, I could give you a little ditty if you'd like. I'd love a little ditty. All right. All right. This is a uh, really song for uh, I Googled songs that everybody knows for this, and it recommended this only second to single ladies. So <laughs> it is You Are My Sunshine. <laughs> okay. My fingers are crossed that it was. All right. There we go. That's a great song. <laughs> All right. Awesome. <laughs> I'm going to bring up my, uh, my lyrics here because <laughs> apparently not Love everybody it. knows it. And um, good luck hearing both the accordion and me, but we'll try. You are my sunshine, my only sunshine. You make me happy when skies are gray. You'll never know, dear, how much I love you. Please don't take my sunshine away. I've got this foot here. This, so you guys can all see it. Just gonna place it here. Like I was saying, I've got this foot here. Our friend, he made it. It's true. It is a nice foot. It is an art. Check it out. B is a great friend who reads great stories. I love this weird foot with all of my heart. You are my sunshine, my only sunshine. And a foot, you make me happy when skies are gray. You'll never know, dear, how much I love you. Please don't take my sunshine weird foot away. I love you. You made me weepy. Stop it. I love you too. 
That was so lovely. And I love how you didn't explain that weird, weird foot that I made in grade seven that I gave to you for winning a trivia prize at my show. There you go. You explained it in one sentence. <laughs> <laughs> the that magic was... of theater. Oh, well, I was going to ask, thank you for that. I was going to ask you uh, what your win was for the week. And I would like yeah. to uh, just start it off with that was my win for the week. And that was really sweet and cute. And I love your voice. Oh, man. Okay, now you. <laughs> <laughs> uh, my win for the week. My win for the week was this. Now, and before this, my win for the week, I had really good fish. I had this lemon pepper. <laughs> <laughs> I had a really good piece of lemon pepper fish. That's awesome. I love yeah. that. Okay, good, good, good. Thank you so much for doing this with me. Um, I want, before I do my special goodbye with you, I would like to uh, tell people, I know you're doing a show on Tuesday um, at nine o'clock on Bad Dog TV called Pleasureville with Avery Jean Brennan, who is lovely. Uh, but what else, how can we follow you? What should we look forward to? Um, what should you look forward to in general in life or? <laughs> no, I, um, I am Breton like the crackers on the Instagram. Um, there's a couple cool things coming up. I got, I'm going to be working on a really cool movie, um, in Halifax with some other really cool people. Uh, it's called Don, the dad, Don, her dad and tractor. You can look that up. Um, I got, if you're in Halifax by some crazy chance, got a show on Sunday at good robot. Otherwise just taking it one day at a time, you know, going to protest when we can calling our MPs. Let's all just keep on putting out the love and the good vibes. That's what I have to say here. That was perfect. Um, okay. That was great. Thank well, you. you're great. And that was a great outro. And I wanted to say that I hope that you're having a nice day and I hope you have a great rest of your day and whatever type of day you have, you did your best and that is enough. And I'm proud of you. I love you so much. I'm really, really proud of you. And I appreciate uh, you being on this with me. Be right back at you. Just like, oh, you, you're great. You're awesome, Thanks. and this is awesome. Thank you so much, buddy. I'll talk to you soon. Have a great rest of your shift. Yeah. <laughs> you have a rest of your show. Thanks, buddy. I'll talk to you soon. Okay, bye. Bye. That was so lovely. I haven't been able to talk to Breton. They moved to Halifax months ago, and that was really lovely. Uh, and a lovely little song. Thank you for that, bud. Well, guess what, friends? What a crazy coincidence, because right now I'm going to read you The Very Hungry Caterpillar um, by Eric Carle. And this is a book that uh, is just fun and sweet and nostalgic, and I hope you like it, so buckle up. All right, The Very Hungry Caterpillar. Can you see? Okay. In the light of the moon, a little egg lay on a leaf. One Sunday morning, the warm sun came up and pop, out of the egg came a tiny and very hungry caterpillar. He started to look for some food. On Monday, he ate through one apple, but he was still hungry. On Tuesday, he ate through two pears, but he was still hungry. On Wednesday, he ate through three plums, but he was still hungry. Doesn't sound like that much food. It's reasonable that he's still hungry. On Thursday, he ate through four strawberries, but he was still hungry. On Friday, he ate through five oranges, but he was still hungry. On Saturday, he ate through one piece of chocolate cake, one ice cream cone, one pickle, one slice of cheese, one slice of salami, one lollipop, one piece of cherry pie, one sausage, one cupcake, and one slice of watermelon. That night, he had a stomach ache. Uh-oh. The next day was Sunday again. The caterpillar ate through one nice green leaf, and after that, he felt much better. Now he wasn't hungry anymore, but he wasn't a little caterpillar anymore. He was a big, fat caterpillar. He built a small house called a cocoon around himself. He stayed inside for more than two weeks. Then he nibbled a hole in the cocoon, pushed his way out, and 
He was a beautiful butterfly. There we go, friends. I hope you like that book. Uh, thank you so much for hanging out with me. I really appreciate you supporting the show. Uh, thank you, Bag Dog, for letting me do this. It's so lovely and, I don't know, such a dream to be able to do this. This is really fun and gentle and wholesome. And um, they have some donation links below. Um, if you can uh, donate, uh, please do. That'd be really lovely. Everyone's just kind of doing their best and working really hard to do these shows. And there's so many people behind putting out this content. And if you can do that, that would be really lovely. Uh, tonight at 9.30, there's Never Have I Ever with uh, Daphne Joe, who is so lovely and fun. And I hope you have a nice day today. And uh, whatever type of day you're having uh, or you have, you did your best and, and your best is good enough. And uh, I'm really proud of you and I appreciate you and I love you. Make sure you wear a mask and drink water and sign petitions and donate and be proactive and let's keep all of our friends safe and warm. Uh, thank you, I love you, I hope you have a great week and I'll see you next Friday at 4.30. Bye friends. <laughs>